was all quite uh, random that I happened to be to be seeing the ad of this uh, meetup. In fact, uh, the date that I started Creative Crew was probably before the actual uh, incorporation, and it started as a Adobe user group when I was still in Italy in 2006, and I was so curious to expand and share my knowledge about Adobe. And I went to ask uh, Adobe, how do I set up a user group back in Italy? And uh, it took forever to answer me. It took uh, uh, weeks and weeks. Could you put up the slide with the previous logo? Because I have a little story about it. Um, and so I, I, I bugged Adobe so much to a point that I told them, I remember writing an email saying, if you don't tell me how to set up an Adobe user group, I will set it up anyway, and I will call it Adobe user group, whether you endorse it or not, it doesn't matter. And suddenly they replied. They said, you're welcome to set up a user group. But there was a time when I was moving to Singapore, and there was a major problem. I did not speak English, and so I had to learn how to speak English first, because I, before I actually made my meetup groups. And so I started conducting some training in uh, Photoshop, learning English very fast. And uh, all the pictures that you see here are actually pictures that I have taken uh, from Singapore Zoo. Uh, this one I think was in Bangkok, that one in Bangkok, this one in Cambodia, no, these two in Cambodia. Uh, of course, this is the Mer Lion, uh, this is the Bird Park in Singapore. Uh, this is in uh, Orchard Road, in the opposite Takashimaya. These are all pictures that I've taken, and I went back home, and I outlined, and I put them together. But the first meetup uh, of uh, Leon, 2009, January 2009, was actually the version 1.0 of Creative Crew, because there was a alpha and a beta version of it. And at the beginning, it was... Uh, uh, me try to get some people to come and listen to me talking about Photoshop. And then Illustrator, sometimes in design, sometimes After Effects. And at the beginning was a real disaster. Because I just moved to Singapore, I have very few friends, I don't speak much English, so I just asked my friends, come and show you how to do some editing with the photos. And I have a few friends that were hosting these very, very tiny talks. There was a moment where I was just this little to give up and all that you have seen today would not have happened. When I conducted a presentation uh, and I booked a room and I was so excited and I put it all the way on social media, called my friends, write them SMS because there was no WhatsApp back then, I think it was 2007. And I was trying to do it every month, every month and uh, the audience was very, very small, like one person. I remember running a whole presentation for one person. Uh, there was ones that I really gave, nearly gave up. There were only two. And uh, at the end of the presentation, I say, I think, guys, thank you so much for coming, but I will not carry on. And there was Alex, who used to come to the meetings back then, and say, trust me, one more time. <laughs> and they say, how do you know one more time? They say, trust me, one more time. Do it one more time. And that month actually happened, the trip. It was in, uh, if I recall correctly, it was uh, when he told me that it was September 2007. And we were running the presentation at Adobe. And Adobe was so kind to sponsor the room. And I showed up with two guests. So there was just me and two guests. And it was a beautiful uh, room, very well equipped. And they told me, trust me, one more time, one more time. I said, okay, let me do it one more time. I remember going back home telling my wife, I'm done with Creative Crew. So, yeah, you should not carry on doing it because you're not making any money, you're just investing your time and you don't get anything out of it. But I trusted Alex that time and the month after it happened that there was a company here in Singapore that was selling software and that month, I don't know why, I don't know how it happened, I really don't remember, but they put us in their mailing list. And I asked Adobe to host one more time and it was so packed so packed that the room that they have allocated couldn't, fill, couldn't fit all the guests that came. There were 82 people that attended that presentation 
and they had to actually open another wing of the Adobe office and there, was, there were people literally sitting on the desks and that night I met Carson, it was the first time I met Carson and I asked, hey, would you like to help me organize in the next one and the next one. And by the time we reach uh, uh, 2009, I believe, uh, we already incorporated a, so a proper society. So we had Mark Plunkett, Linus Slim, and uh, the, the core group of 10 that actually signed and became a uh, member. I believe I'm still registered with the, with the registry of the society. I'm not really sure about it. But it was, uh, it was how it started. I'm very glad that at a point where I needed to leave Singapore and take a, and take a quick break, Please call me back in five minutes. Uh, at the point where I was uh, supposed to take that break and I stayed away from Singapore for four years, uh, I'm very glad that you guys stopped the Adobe uh, monologues <laughs> because the, the market changed so much. There are so many things that you can do now outside of Adobe and they all belong to the same uh, sphere. It's so exciting that now you guys brought it into a totally new dimension. As for me right now, I'm very interested in the blockchain space and I've got a few projects running that are exciting to me, probably very boring for the majority of the people. The, the potential uh, outreach of uh, blockchain is quite interesting, even for 3D printing, which is something that uh, probably didn't take off as fast as we imagined. We were imagining like 10 years ago that everyone would have had a 3D printer at home. But now nobody has a 3D printer at home. And the reason why nobody has a 3D printer at home is because you cannot track what you print. And so if I want to print out a, um, a dinosaur from a Toys the movie for my child at home, I can't print it because there is no model available unless I develop it or I get someone to develop it. But my idea could be a 3D printer that is blockchained and on the blockchain, Toys R Us puts the project as a sort of a smart contract that begins when I start printing it and ends after I print the dinosaur. They get the commission and I get the dinosaur. And all I do, I order from home and I blockchain the IP of it. So every time someone wants to print that specific item, it gets rewarded. And so the 3D printer might have, uh, you have to refill the ink, you have to top up your wallet, and then you are good to print. And in that case, you will uh, expand dramatically the, the usage because you can print whatever you want, just you have the unlimited library of projects available for sale that you can track and legitimately reward uh, whoever is the owner. It's one of the use that can be done. Uh, for other things, I'll certainly save the date for the 13. I'll be happy to see what you guys are up to. Thank you. Yeah.